Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Siobhan. If you're new here, welcome. This is a series called Morning Vlog and Chat where I talk about different topics. If there's something specific you want to discuss, it doesn't matter what it's related to. It could be life, it could be planning, lifestyle, anything. Just drop it in the comments below. So this morning's topic is going to be Why Me? And I thought of this <laughs> title because... I know that there are a lot of people facing illnesses, bad situations, hardship, and sometimes when we feel really down, we ask ourselves that question like, why me? Why is this happening to me? So that's our conversation for today. I usually talk a little bit, talk about the topic at the towards the end of the video, so halfway through, um, I'll chat about that. So this morning, I am making breakfast for the kids. I usually make them a hot breakfast. This morning, they're having egg and cheese wraps. And this is just a very easy breakfast that I do all the time. I just scramble eggs and I put it on a tortilla wrap, if I say it wrong. Forgive me, a Jamaican accent. And sprinkle cheese. Sometimes I do bacon. I chop it up and put it in it or sausage. And this is what they have for breakfast today. After making breakfast, it's time to get my daughter's lunch ready. So this morning she's having leftover pasta and I used a thermos, poured the hot water in it to kind of heat the thermos up. And then after about seven minutes, the thermos is considered heated up. So strawberries is one of the fruits I don't already pre-wash. So I wash that in the morning. This is the pasta she's getting. It's this angel hair pasta with like a creamy butter, parmesan butter sauce from the day before. There was leftover, so I'm just warming it up in the microwave. Because it gets, it got a little clump while it was in the refrigerator, I just tip a little bit of milk in it, sprinkle some parmesan cheese and more parsley. Kind of mix it all in to give it back some flavor. I think I also added a little, little bit of garlic powder and mixed it in before I put it in the microwave to kind of make sure that, you know, it still has a get really good flavor. So this is what she's having today, Parmesan, um, the pasta with fruit, and I usually put another snack in her lunch bag. So one fruit and then one like a fun snack like Cheez-Its or something like that, or sometimes goldfish or pretzels. So this is the routine in the morning. The kids get a hot breakfast. My daughter gets lunch. It's either hot lunch for her in her thermos, or it's a sandwich of some type, or different, or a platter with different things in her lunch container. So this is every morning. She doesn't eat the food at school. So we, I make lunch for her or my husband if we're alternating, and that's what we do in the morning. So always make sure that I don't squeeze, tighten the thermos too much because I don't want her to have problems when she's in school. What do you want? And when I you wash the fruits in the lunch. morning, sometimes I wash enough for myself to have with my breakfast. But this morning I didn't feel like eating so early. So I didn't really cut any extra for myself. And if I'm cutting strawberry, I usually cut like a half strawberry for Snoopy because he loves strawberries as well. So I can't forget Snoopy. Else? So this is her lunch. I, I pack a fork with a napkin and just make sure she has what she needs during lunchtime. So it's always, there's not really much extra time. As soon as I'm done with breakfast and lunch, it's time to go wait for the bus. And it's, I live in New York, so it's cold. So I have to put on my wait in for the bus coat because this morning particularly it was very cold i believe it was probably 10 degrees in the morning and it's one of those things where i should have realized that i should not have gone outside in these silky pajama pants huh? because i was freezing so the, her bus stop is right at the corner of our house so it's not too far and the bus comes literally like a minute Bye, after we go outside. Have a good day. This is just the timing. I like things to just move from breakfast to outside, get on the bus. 
So I came back and this is the time I feed Snoopy. I give him his meal because he's so used to me coming back in the house and grabbing his food. So this morning particularly, I did drop my son to school because it was very cold and he walks to school. It's about a 15 minute walk, if that much, probably 10 to 15 minutes, depending on his pace. But my husband had to go to work very early so he wasn't able to take talent to school so i took him to school this morning because it was really cold and even though like i think about sometimes like you know we grew up we had to walk to school during the cold and harsh weather but if i'm able to take my kid to school because it's really cold or it's bad weather i'm gonna do it i don't see it as like spoiling them it's just some type of humility if i'm here and i have a car i'm going to take you to school i'm not going to let you walk in the bad weather because this for what reason what am i trying to teach you so i just take him to school it's not a problem so these are my outside sweatpants i put it on over my pajamas this way when i get back in the house if i want to go lay down i can just keep right my back, pajamas okay. on and just take my outside pants off so Snoopy gets like this every single I'm time I'm leaving. Right back. And I was going to bring him, but I'm trying to break him out of the habit of always coming with me when I leave. It breaks my heart because I'm just going for about five minutes, but he just doesn't understand. Me leaving is like leaving forever to him. So we go through this and every day when I'm leaving, I have to bring him back inside because he runs out and try to <laughs> to go with us. Inside. but that's what happened from being home with I'll him right for back. over a year you know they just get used to you being there so it's time to do my own thing now so i have a decision to make whether i want to continue to get ready for myself or take a little nap if depending on how much sleep i got the day before i usually does do not get a lot of sleep so I'll go back in the bed and depending on the first start of my meeting, you know, I'll take a quick nap or a little power nap. And this morning I took like a little nap. It wasn't a, lo a long nap because I had to get up to get ready for work. And I have a couple meetings that started pretty early. So I wanted to kind of prepare for the day. So throughout the morning, I do check my phone when I have a little bit of break. And I just make sure if there's any emails that I need to respond to, I'm responding to it. Or if there's something that I needed to send early in the morning, I'll send that. So I am actively working. It's just not I'm not getting I'm not dressed in like sitting at my desk and ready for work. So if I'm taking like a quick nap, I try to make sure that I have some type of light in the room. I don't want to turn on the light itself. So I'll just open the blinds to bring some light so i don't fall into that deep sleep i do set my alarms and on my job phone and also my personal phone if i'm taking a quick nap up. it's only just for a few can minutes jump? maybe 20 minutes can you make a big jump? and i do set a timer so i can hi? wake up on time so make snoopy always he has a problem getting on the bed because he the bed is raised and he, you know his short legs so I keep him up with me in the morning and we get a little nap together before I get up and get ready for work. So the first thing I do is make my bed. And this is just something that I've, I grew up making my bed in the morning. I also feel that it kind of jump starts my day because I'm like, all right, the bed is made, time to get my myself together. And I don't like walking past my bedroom or coming into my bedroom with my bed unmade because I feel like an unmade bed makes the place messy and it does not give me like that common feel that I want in my house so this is why I also don't like a messy house because it gives to me mess equals chaos and I it's I don't feel good I don't feel good when the house is messy when my house is tidy I feel more calm so I wash in my face before I shower because I feel like when I wash my face in the sink, I spend more time and I do it with more care. And this is the closet that's inside of the bedroom where it's just my clothes. My husband's clothes is in the basement. We have a big closet in the basement, a cedar closet. 
and he has like these custom things he just has his his own kind of thing down there so he gave me this closet and he built this system for me because it was two little doors because it's an older house so they didn't really have much closet space i guess people back in the days didn't have that many clothes um as we do so this is the system that he built for me for a valentine's day gift right after we moved in into the house so outfit for today is leggings and i'm wearing my favorite sweater from zara because I haven't worn it in a while and it's a very cute sweater i'm trying to make sure i cherish it and keep it as long as i possibly can but that's going to be my outfit for the day related to making up my bed in the morning i do a little bit of tidying up in my office when i walk in this is the room that i'm in the most throughout the day so i do have to kind of straighten it up almost daily because i'm using a lot of things i'm going through my drawers and whatever I'm doing in here, it does get a little bit um un a little bit messy, so I do a little light tidying up. I don't like for it to become too messy because then it delays me a lot in the morning, so I try to make sure that when I am done using something, I put it back so that I'm not spending too much time cleaning in the morning. so this is the outfit. I showered, got myself ready, lotioned, and this is a sweater and my leggings. I'm very big on taking care of my skin, my face, my legs, arms, body, everywhere. So skincare products is something that I really like, and I'm having a growing collection. I can link the products that I use, but for my primer, I use, not primer, my serum, I use the Bobbi Brown Serum along with their eye cream. And I use the Kiehl's under eye serum before I put the Bobbi Brown's eye cream on. And I use a Kiehl's moisturizer right now because I'm in between moisturizers. So I have this moisturizer that helps brighten your skin and get rid of the uneven tones and pigments in your skin. I just started using that. I bought it during a sale a couple months ago. But I like to have like backup moisturizers in case my favorite moisturizers are done. I'm going to be on camera a lot today, so I'm doing my makeup. This is not something I do every day. Don't see me putting on a full face of makeup to work at home. Usually I'll just do my brows and some concealer if my camera is on. If I have a day where I'm just working and there is no camera and I am just working at my own pace, I will just wash my face, shower, change my clothes, sometimes just put on back different pajamas. But it all depends on the mood and what I have going on. I feel like when I'm dressed and put together like this, I'm a little bit more productive because I'm I'm actually like out of my pajama clothes. But if I have like a light lazy day, I will stay in my pajamas for the whole day and I will still get my work done. So here is my perfume collection. It's growing and I think I have my faves down pack. But I got this Miss Dior sample in the set that I got for with that little pink bag. I forgot to share it but it was a skincare set and they gave they sent some samples and I'm going to actually buy this Miss Dior perfume. So after face makeup, it's time to do my hair. And I have to do a little bit of touching up to this wig because I I had it on for a couple days and the front usually lifts if you wash your face really big not really vigorously, but I wash my face morning and night. These are the products I use. I use the Guts to Be Glued, the yellow one. So the front of my wig always lifts after probably like two days, but the whole thing doesn't lift. Just the very front. And this is what I do. I just apply a little bit of the Guts to Be Glued, either the spray or the gel. I like the gel better. I just dab it on and then let it dry a little bit. And then I just kind of massage it in and it it is fixed. So I usually do my hair once a week. I wash my wigs like every week. 
sometimes a little bit less depending on what I've been doing. If I have like makeup on every day and makeup gets on it, I'll take it off and wash it because that's just the upkeep if you want to maintain your wigs. And also for, you know, hygiene purposes, I wash my hair and I wash the wig. And this is just a, something that I do all the time. So if you do wear wigs, I recommend you washing them like often because they it's not live here so you don't want your wigs to to become too dry you don't want it to start to smell so there are products that i do use in my hair like this aussie it's like a hair condition spray it's like lavender after i wash it i spray it and i make sure that it smells nice i use conditioners that has a really nice smell but it's, it's all just the upkeep it's all about my upkeep and personal hygiene and I feel like hair is a part of your hygiene as well so you need to take care of that and I spend a lot of time make learning how to do my hair and if you, this is just something I recommend to people because they always ask you know how do I do my hair can I share I am not a perf not a perfection I'm not a professional or an expert but I've watched enough videos on YouTube to kind of make myself look good so I don't look too <laughs> so I don't look bad so one thing with wigs is flat iron in the top is essential because when your wig is lumpy and bumpy at the top it looks very wiggy I know it's a wig and obviously it's a wig but there is a difference between a wiggy wig and like a, a laid wig and wiggy wigs is not the thing I tie it down at night it helps to flatten it out and the flatter it is on top the more natural it looks so those are just some of my tips because I get these questions all the time. And I don't do this all the, all the time. Sometimes my hair stays in a wrap and tied up or in um, these little pigtails so I can like make it curly. But like I said, I'm gonna be on camera today so I wanna make sure that I do look nice. I didn't curl the hair like I wanted to because I was running out of time and I also wanted to make sure I had time to sit and chat about things. So that's the hair part of the video. So last night before I made this video, I was kind of coming up with some things to talk about. And one thing that really popped in my head was the topic of why me. And so the topic that really popped into my head was why me. And I share my illness, you know, on my social media platform in hopes of helping others to see that, you know, after this initial <laughs> finding out of what's wrong with us is not the end and that there's more to life and then we can actually live a decent life and try to be, try to enjoy life while we can. You know, chronic illness lasts a really long time and it affects my daily life and affects my mental health. So I know how bad it is. I know how, how dealing with an illness can get to us. So I try to be like a beacon of hope for others to see that just because you have an illness, life doesn't stop there because when I found out I had heart failure, I thought that was it for me. You know, I'm like, how much time do I have to live? And it's just one of those things you're like, okay, there's nothing else that I can do in my life than just deal with this. So for years, I was very upset. I was angry. I was angry all the time because I just didn't understand, like, why me? What did I do to... to to have these things happening to me and it, I was in a really dark place like one of the darkest places I've ever been I lost my faith and I just kind of lost my way in life because I didn't really care anymore you know I figured that I was gonna die from heart failure didn't even think about like you know there's treatments there's medication that was it was just it for me it was really hard dealing with something and the more I you know, spoke to my sister, spoke to my friends and family, kind of helped me a little bit opening up to people 
and this is why I feel so comfortable opening up on my platforms because I know a lot of us are facing battles that no one may not know about and we can't help but being angry it's okay to feel ups angry like why is this happening to you why why me but these are just obstacles that we have to overcome ourselves in order to move forward i can't tell you why it hap these things are happening to you why you're diagnosed with an illness why your life isn't going the way you plan or why you're having such a hard life it's just that's just the hands that we were dealt and we have to play those cards carefully because that will determine our future and how much if we have any enjoyment in life one thing a lot of people used to tell me when i tell them about all my illnesses and everything they used to say you know god gives it god gives his toughest battle to his strongest soldiers <laughs> when i tell you i hated hated that saying I didn't want to be a strong soldier. I just wanted to be a regular person. I didn't want to fight anything. And I hated that for such a long time. And one day when I was talking to someone about, you know, what I go through on a daily basis, just living, it popped in. She said that, you know, I can't deal with my illness. I just can't go on living a normal life and just pretending nothing is happening to me, that something may potentially kill me. And I said that, well, when is, when is this thing gonna kill you? Nobody knows, we don't know. So you, either you wanna enjoy the little moment, the moments that we have now, or sit around and wallow in misery, waiting for this disease to kill you. And she said that, you know, my outlook was was very inspiring to her to kind of help her change the way she thinks and then i start to think you know there are people who are dealing with illnesses life issues that are really having a hard time and can't really cope with it and i have all these things happening to me and i'm finding a way to cope with it maybe that's my way of fighting this battle maybe in a sense that is my strength of being able to overcome this so i started to look at it differently i changed my perspective because i didn't want to be upset about everything i was mad at god i held that in me for a long time and i was just dwelling on life isn't fair you know i'm tired a lot i just can't do as much as i would like i wanted to to live and i'm limited to what i can do but i'm limited to what i can do but i've adjusted to what i can do in these years yes my prognosis if my heart failure isn't treated it could possibly lead to me getting a transplant if my heart failure is not maintained the next step is a heart transplant and that has its own, own slew of <laughs> battles that i have to mentally prepare to fight one day my heart may become weak all of a sudden or it could progress over time i don't know but i can't dwell on it and have these things affect the moments that i get to live and be with my husband and be with my children and you know inspire others because life is to me is life is so full of beautiful things and things we can do and we can find happiness in life no matter how little it is it doesn't have to be expensive I like painting. Painting makes me happy. I haven't done it in a long, long time. I stopped painting years ago when I was dealing with my illness. And I said, this weekend, I'm going to Michael's. I'm going to get a, a sketch pad, get my paint. And I'm going to start this back up because this is something that I want to do for myself. And I want to do as much as I can, even though I'm limited. I can't run. It's hard to ride my bike. It's very heartbreaking just riding my bike. But... I figured, you know, me because maybe I can deal with it, you know, but it's not comforting and it's okay to feel that way. And when people say things to try to comfort you, it's really hard. Trying to comfort someone who's dealing with a chronic illness is the hardest thing because in our heads, we're, we already formulate our opinions and our reasoning and our anger is there and we have these these bad thoughts about 
what could potentially happen and we have to mentally get out of that in order for the comfort to your comfort in words to really take effect if you get what i'm saying so one thing like when i see people out and about just living their lives i wonder you know how it feels to not have to constantly worry about your health and i want that i wanted i want to be out just having fun just living my life running doing adventurous things but i can't to a limit because I'm scared that what if it's too much for my heart and then something happens and blah 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 you know there's so many things to think about and these are just some things that I kind of worry about it's unrealistic that I may be able to run around with this heart so I walk you know I ride my back with my husband we take our time we he kind of coaches me through and he'll stop and take breaks he all he even thought of getting like a tandem bike so I can sit on the back. So I look at that as, all right, I may not be able to do this, but we can do this. And that's just how you have to look at things. And whatever battle you're facing, you have to find, you have to find something good because the bad really can take over our thought process. The bad in anything can really it's harder to be negative than it, e than it is. It's easier, sorry, it's easier to be negative about things than it is to be positive. It, we are very hard on ourselves. We don't give ourselves grace and sometimes grace. And sometimes we can't get out of these spaces that we've dug, these holes that we've dug ourselves into. And we have to do, we have to get out of it. Because if you want to live life, you have to get out of these holes and see what's around the hole, see what's outside that hole and see how much beauty there is and things that you can do and be happy in the time being. I know death is inevitable. We're all going to die at some point. So I think that as, okay, yes, I have heart failure and I have all these issues, but I can die some doing something else. <laughs> you know, this may not kill me. So why dwell on it? Because anything can happen at any time so I try to focus on my wow my wows instead of focusing on the whys I focus on the wow it's like yeah I've accomplished a lot despite my obstacles and yes my heart is weak but I'm able to still care for myself I can dress up go to work have a family so I'm like wow I can do all of that instead of damn why is this happening to me well wow I can get to, I zip lined last year. Not a big, big one, but a little one. Wow. So it's just our perspective. And so, you know, look on the brighter side. That's really all we can do sometimes because what we go through is beyond our control. And we can, we have no control over it, really. So I say to anyone that's dealing with something, whether um, an illness, a life issue. If you need to just take a, this rest, sometimes the best thing we can do is just take a nap, just sleep. Cry is needed. I can't, because we won't be happy daily is impossible and that's fine. So I'm not gonna come on here and say I'm this big peachy person and you know, I look on the bright side of things even though I'm suffering from this. No, there are days when I cry, like I'll cry in the shower. If I'm having a really bad day with, um, my symptoms are showing up a lot. My symptoms are showing up a lot. I really cry and I feel better the next day. So this is just to wrap everything up. And I just allow myself to embrace my emotions and not let them run its course. And, and let them run its course because sometimes you have to go through the emotion to kind of get to that better stage. You know, sometimes there's deep sadness because I think about how long I'll be able, I'll, be, I'll live. You know, I want to be around for my children, my husband, and that gets me down. But I know that's just a part of it. I can't avoid that. That thought will come back from time to time. And I have to deal with that thought when it comes. So, you know, I've learned that I have to face these feelings head on or they will build up inside and they will put me into a bad space that I don't want to be in. You know, I'm able to talk to my family and friends and I'm able to express what I'm going through online publicly with my <clears throat> with my audience and <clears throat> excuse me. 
and the feedback that i get knowing that i'm helping someone else it helps me and i'm kind of figured you know maybe that's just why it's happening to me maybe i can be a beacon of hope for someone else um and we share our stories we can be strong for each other so that's my little why moment and we're going to talk about that we spoke we're talking about today i have to go now because the work starts so if you have any questions comments if you enjoy these little get ready with me and chat videos please go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you have a topic that you want me to discuss on the next one just comment below so thank you so much for joining me and just remember you know you're not alone and i'm here you can also find me on instagram at this well plan life